The data that I will be presenting is uh, of a large initiative in Germany called Network Genomic Medicine. And the basic idea is to profile lung cancer patients for genomically actionable mutations or for vulnerabilities for immune oncology therapies. Um, we think lung cancer is a specific challenge in uh, oncology because it's the most uh, deadliest cancer disease worldwide with the highest mortality. Usually patients are diagnosed in advanced stage disease and it's clear we need better and more effective therapies. And in the last years we have seen introduction of targeted therapies which specifically address genomic mutations or immune oncology therapies which specifically address immunological uh, vulnerabilities. And thereby, uh, the majority of lung cancer patients today can be treated in first-line therapies by more specific, more targeted therapies than chemotherapy alone. Um, actually, you're totally correct. Uh, PDL1 has made a huge impact on lung cancer treatment, and there's now a subgroup of patients that can be treated uh, by a PD1 antibody uh, specifically as first line therapies rather than by chemotherapies. So, uh, we have initiated also a German wide uh, uh, initiative to harmonize testing and reporting for PDL1 status, but also we have implemented testing for. Uh, the mutational burden, as we know, that, that is also a very good uh, prognostic indicator for patients that are susceptible. So there is a conversion in molecular diagnostics. On the one side, you have a readout for specific mutations, translocations, amplifications, gene alterations, but on the other hand, you get um, an oversight of the total mutational burden of a patient and its uh, drug uh, vulnerability to immune oncology. That is an absolutely important uh, um, aspect because once you have an effective therapy, let's say by target drug, EGFR, ALK, BRAF, MET, it is very important to monitor these patients for uh, acquired resistance because in most of these cases we have uh, very, very good second or even third line therapies that will address the resistance mechanism. And all the data from our network show that when these patients are carefully monitored, if they are applicable for second line therapies with another TKI or another antibody, they have a, 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 a huge increase in overall survival and quality of life also. In lung cancer, we have this huge uh, group of patients that are exposed to uh, environmental uh, toxic um, agents like smoking, for example. So the number of patients with germline mutations is much less, although they exist. There's lefromani, for example, a patient that get also lung cancers. There is uh, uh, germline carriers of EGFR mutations that exists, but um, considering the total amount of patients, that's a very minor fraction. So the, the, the huge challenge is the uh, tremendous risk um, for smokers, uh, prevent smoking actually. There are three areas, I would say, where we need uh, progress uh, for lung cancer patients at the moment. One is prevent smoking. That is certainly um, would be a very effective means. However, if <clears throat> the entire world would stop smoking, quit smoking now, it would still mean that uh, lung cancer would be the seventh deadliest cancer worldwide. So the, the amount of non-smokers uh, that uh, will develop a lung cancer is considerable uh, and large. Um, the other is early diagnostics, uh, that uh, to, to increase the, n the number of patients 
that are, uh, can be treated by, by surgical resection. And um, thereby we have now seen new technologies like detection of mutation in the peripheral blood, uh, trying to select the risk patients for um, surveillance strategy, low dose CT and so forth. And there's a big consortium in Germany also that um, surveys super high risk patients, um, patients that have, uh, have asbestosis and are concurrent smokers. Um, and, um, and the third area is uh, the advanced stage patients uh, where we try to find and deliver better and more effective therapies. So I think all these three areas have to cooperate to, to address the huge problem of lung cancer. Yeah, I think uh, one, uh, one aspect, important aspect I will uh, also show in my uh, presentation is that we need to enable the patho pathologic or the path labs to, uh, to go further, to go beyond a mere histological diagnosis because um, uh, the immune landscape and the genomic landscape is an important aspect that needs to be integrated into daily diagnostics. Thank <laughs> you.